one of Girton's mega commons. Not one of the big ones of course, but um, what a peach of a fish. So I'm going to try and answer a question that I do get asked quite a lot. A lot of people say to me, Vinny, what, what's the best DNA baits? You know, I'm considering giving the company a go. Um, well, the simple answer is there isn't a best DNA bait. You know, everything the guys put out there is designed to catch your carp. You know, why would they put something out that didn't do that? So what I've got here is I've got my, my, my hook bait bag, which is a <laughs> bit of a mess. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to talk you through what products I use and why I use them, okay? So we'll start with these. These are the S7 Dumbbell Wafters. My number one DNA bait. It's my number one choice of bait wherever I go. And I'll tell you why, okay? I use these on a KD rig. Um, they're a wafter, they just sit above the hook, so they're perfect for that type of presentation. I use them in conjunction with a PVA bag, and phew, I've caught loads of fish on them. Absolutely superb. The Evolution liquid that I soak them in, I soak them months before I go fishing. I'll give you an example of that. I've got two tubs in the garage now. They're, they're for next summer, okay? Not for this year. These are last year's that I put on soak, okay? So they're absolutely drenched. It's really high attract bait, and like I say, I've got loads of carp on them. Really good bait, okay? If I'm using S7 and I want to fish longer, hence I can't use a PVA bag, I'll simply switch to... Yep. <laughs> switch to the pop-ups exactly the same principle okay the corker pop-ups uh, and again soaked in the same liquid they're absolutely drenched mines are now covered in them so that's my number one bait if I'm fishing over boily that's my number one bait okay now if you seen my um, my French adventure that's just going out on the uh, DNA page you will notice that I used the switch now, the reason I used the switch while I was in France this year, I mean, I'd, usually I'll take a seven, like I said in that video, it had catfish in the water and I didn't want to catch any catfish. So the switch is the newest bait by the company. Um, again, I'm using the cork ball pop-ups though with the switch and these are soaked in the Intense Booster. I, I don't know a lot about the switch because I haven't used it that much, but all I know is that I took it to France once and I had 50 pounder, 60 pounder, fish got straight on it, so no dramas there with that bait. But I'll be honest, it's not a bait that I've used a lot. So the other fish meal bait that we have at DNA is the SLK. Now, what, what we generally have on a team is when the guys are fishing fish meal, like some guys will go for the S7, some guys will go for the SLK. Personally, I go for the S7, but the big fish this stuff has done speaks for itself. I do carry a tub of them though, and I carry a tub of them because I, if I'm what I call opportunist fishing, so you see a fish roll, you're going to wang a rod on it, okay? I'll do one or two things. I'll either put a fluoro bait on it or I'll put one of these on it, okay? And that's why I carry them. Um, I've considered moving over to the SLK for this lake. At the moment, I'm undecided where I'm going with that because I've caught fish on the S7. But to be fair, this lake isn't a good example of, of to test a bait because there's so much food in here, they don't need bait and, and it's not really the type of water to test it on. But some of the guys on the team absolutely swear by this stuff and it's done so many big fish. I mean, you know, not, not for me to say really, is it? It's done a lot of big fish. But I carry them opportunist fishing. Right, moving on to the fluoro baits. There's a range of fluoro baits out there, and the two that I carry the most are these two. So we've got the PB pop-ups, which are yellow, a real fruity flavour, and then the Milky Malts. In particular, in the winter, the Milky Malts did really well for all the guys on the team, including myself. Also, on here, I've caught a lot of my fish have been caught in here using the Milky Malts. A single hook bait approach for me. Um, some people like to fish a fluoro bait over a, a, a better bait. I personally opt for the opposite. If I'm fishing over a bed of S7, I want my hook bait to match the hatch. So I'll use an S7 pop-up or I'll use an S7 wafter like I explained before. I use these for single hook bait fishing. See a fish roll, especially on here. See a fish roll. I don't want to be spodding and whacking, throwing stick on top of it. See a fish roll, try and get a lead on the fish, disturbing the water as little as I can. And this will be what I'll have on the hook. It's bright. It smells and they pick them up. Um, they come with intense boosters. If you want to buy them, they come separately with intense boosters. I, I advise that you do that. I cover all mine in the intense booster. Just gives it that bit of extra flavor, bit of extra attraction. So those are the two that I carry in that range. On to the nutter. 
Nutter doesn't really get talked about a lot, but again, going back to the team, we have a private page, as all bait companies do. Some of the guys do really, really well on this stuff. I use the Nutter, I use it for zig rig fishing. The reason I do that is because it imitates, or you can make it imitate a mixer perfectly. You snip them down, I use them for surface fishing, zig rig fishing. Occasionally, if I'm fishing over a particle mix, so say like you're fishing a bit of tigers, hemp, maize, corn, again, perfect to fish over the top of that. I'll try and uh, answer another uh, question that I do get asked from time to time. You know, some, sometimes people come up to me and say, oh, Vinny, you know, these guys have offered me a bait deal. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I've been with DNA for, like, seven years, something like that now. It's a while now. Um, and I'm absolutely confident with the products that they give me. And, you know, and I, I catch fish wherever I go with it. So I'm, I'm not, I don't really have an active role in the bait world. I don't really see what's going on. I don't, I don't really um, take a take much interest in what's going on but so what I would say to anybody who, who, has, who has that situation where they've been offered something I would say you know if they didn't offer you that deal would you still buy their products uh, and if the answer to that isn't a resounding yes then I think you've answered it yourself haven't you um, yeah I mean DNA could ring me up and say Vin these videos are boring everyone and you know we're not having you on the team anymore I'd still buy their stuff if I was going on a fishing trip, that's what I'd want with me, so that's what I would go and buy. And I'm not just saying that, I genuinely mean that. If I wasn't on the team, I would still buy their products. You know, I didn't come to DNA as a team member, I came to DNA as a customer. I saw what they were doing in the matches, and we were talking years ago now, I saw what they were doing in the matches, and I thought, you know, these guys are putting a good bait together. And I still feel the same now, so if I wasn't a part of the team, I'd still be a DNA customer. So, I think that speaks volumes, to be fair. Right, well, I've just popped the van in the car park. I'm just going to have a walk around this track. You, you, you can drive around here in the summer, but at the moment they've, they've shut the road off, so... Much warmer conditions. I had a massive hit off, that, off this swim. You get a right good view of the lake from this swim, and... Uh, I've got to be honest, I fancy it in here. There's nobody down this bank. You've got to bury your gear into this swim. Right, well, I'm, I'm almost set up. I'm still a bit of a mess. But I've come down to these wood swims on the back of the lake. Fortunately, the owner opened the gate and let me drive my van down. You, don't, you, you can't drive on the grass, but there is a gravel track as far as actually where this swim is, which is, to be fair, the swim I wanted. There's a, there's a lot of fish showing, but they're about 200 yards. <laughs> so, but that's just what I've seen this afternoon. I've seen a couple closer in, to be fair. I've seen a couple on where I'm fishing, but uh, there's a, a lot more fish past me. But that, that's not to say that they're not going to move. Um, so there's a, a, a gravel bar running across the face of the swim at about 85 yards. I'm guessing something like that. So I've put two rods on there. Um, spread a bit of bait across it. I've about... about 25 spoms across that bar. Right, well I'm not, um, I'm not breaking any records with this fish, but it's a good sign, <coughs> they, were, they were showing long, like I said before, they were way, way out of my range, it was about 200 yards the fish, um, and as it got dark, just seen the odd one, just push a little bit closer, it's about midnight now, and I've had one, so about 12 or 13 pounds, something like that, but uh, like I say, it's a good sign. Right, morning. Yeah, I didn't have any more fish uh, last night, just that one, that just that little one, but I've woke up this morning and it's it's thermals time. This is the first time the thermals have come out the bag. Yeah, it's Baltic. It's uh, This wind is horrible, northwesterly wind. Um, 
the fish are still where they were, they're about 200 yards, but I'm seeing more and more pushing in now. So I, I've got fish showing a couple of nice ones as well, showing at about 130. So my spot's around about 90 onto that bar. So what I've done is I've uh, put a couple of choddies together, milky malts. I'm just going to welly them as long as I can. There's a bit of side wind, so I'll, I'll reach about 130 and, I, and I'll be near as damn it on the fish so that's the plan for this morning we'll uh, we'll get some uh, get some new spots going right so that's both the uh, both the rods push long now uh, the right hand uh, sorry the left hand rod I'm going to leave where it is I'm quite happy with that I've seen fish there anyway so I'm happy with that I've pushed two rods as, as long as I can. You know, I'm fishing about 120, 130, something like that. Um, I've got thick, strong line on. There's a lot of weed out there, and, and the shelf that I was fishing to, that gravel shelf, I would have to get the fish back over there. So I'm confident I've got enough fish. I'm on, I'm on enough fish to, to not warrant, you know, drop, dropping my line diameter down and putting put a more of a, 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 a distance line on rather than a strong line. So. Nothing, not a belief last night, so I could hear fish way down to my left, so I wound in, took a walk up, and uh, lo and behold, there's a group of fish uh, down at this end of the lake, so I, I packed up, my hands were freezing, there's a right good frost. It's a pretty little thing. So, there you go. That's another fish showing, so I'm going to get the rod back out, and uh, hopefully we can... Uh, we can get another one. them fish hung around in that bay for a little bit longer and I actually lost one so uh, yeah a bit disappointed about that but they started moving further down the lake and uh, I needed to get back on the air one it was Friday and I didn't want to hit rush hour so uh, yeah I had a couple of bites so I was happy with the trip and uh, yeah it was well worth going so I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you on my next video diary cheers <laughs>